Just within the past couple years, tools have gotten really, really smart, but now you have AI. So what are tools looking like in the next five years, say 2030? I mean, we already have some really crazy tools hitting the market today. So within the next five years, I think we're gonna have a crazy explosion when it comes to smart tools. We're talking tools that diagnose themselves, AI that keeps an eye on your job site, drones that track your progress, and get this, full-size houses being 3D printed out of concrete. And if you think that sounds crazy, just remember, we already have smart batteries and a robotic lawnmower that can cut your grass better than most people I know. Do you remember the Yarbo lawnmower that I reviewed a couple months ago? Well, if you don't, you should be subscribing because that thing is legit, completely ran on GPS and you don't have to lift a finger to get your grass mode. This isn't some sci-fi fantasy. This stuff is happening right now and it's only gonna get weirder. So let's dive into the next five years and what it might look like and why your drill might end up being smarter than your foreman. So let's kick it off with one of the things that are already here and proving we've entered the future, smart batteries. So Milwaukee's red lithium batteries talk to the one key app. You can lock them out, track their health, and get some alerts if a clown tries to walk off the job with one. DeWalt's Tool Connect system does the same. Flex, their batteries and chargers communicate to prevent overheating and overcharging. But by 2030, these things won't just tell you what's wrong, they'll know how you work. If you're the type to overdrive everything, it'll just adjust torque automatically. Leave it in the sun too long, it'll cut itself off and ping your phone. You won't even have to think, it'll just handle it. So yeah, a battery that's basically your crew chief, and that's pretty cool. Now imagine your tools talking back, and I don't mean just beeping when you push them too hard. Milwaukee One Key already lets you customize torque settings and track diagnostics. Hilti's on track gives you alerts for abuse, but this stuff is just a warm up. By 2030, your saw might literally slow itself down mid cut because it senses a kickback coming. Your drill, it could sense that you're using the wrong bit and either stop or just send you a screen alert on your phone. You might even hear your framing nailer go, hey dummy, you loaded finish nails. It's weird, but if it keeps you safe and saves your tools from abuse, well, that might be real nice like. And here's one that you might not like. We're talking AI people and it's affecting everything we do. And that includes safety on the job site. And I'm just telling you straight out, I was a health and safety supervisor on very large construction sites for years. And the one thing I always looked for was people not wearing their safety equipment. But as a former health and safety guy, even I think AI might be going a little bit too far with this one. There's a couple companies out there already testing AI camera systems that monitor the job site. No hard hat, you get flagged. Walk into a hazard zone, you hear a loudspeaker barking at you. About to pass out from heat exhaustion, well, the system notifies your supervisor. But by 2030, this could be required on large-scale job sites. Insurance companies love this type of stuff. Safety inspectors, they love it too. And yeah, it'll probably save lives, but if you ask me, it's kind of creepy. Me personally, I don't want a robot babysitter telling on me every time I do something that might be wrong. And if you're a grown man or woman on the job site, you might feel that Big Brother's watching you a little bit too much. But I'm curious to know what you think about it. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Is this something that you like or you don't? Now, one of the big things everybody's talking about now on the job site is AI and robot technology. Canvas already makes a robot system that finishes drywall. It tapes, it muds, and it sands. And don't take this personally, but it does it with consistency that a lot of crews can't match. It's already being used on large commercial sites. Pair that with Dusty Robotics, a layout printer that marks where your framing, plumbing, and electrical go right on the floor, perfect lines, no measuring tape, no chalk. Robots doing layout and finishing, that's not a pipe dream, it's already happening. It's just not on every job site yet. How about this one though, AR helmets and holograms. Trimble's XR10 and Microsoft HoloLens are changing the game. You wear the helmet and it overlays the building model right in front of you. So instead of guessing where to drill or frame, you see a full 3D model projected right onto the actual job site. By 2030, this might be as common as a laser level. It'll prevent errors and speed up installs, and who knows, maybe we'll finally stop hitting plumbing lines through the subfloor. Let's go back to the robots. So robot crewmates, yeah, it's coming. Built Robotics is already running driverless excavators and trenchers. You plug in GPS maps, hit go, and the thing digs foundations while you're grabbing coffee. Add to that robotic welders, bricklayers, and painters being tested on commercial builds. Now, don't get me wrong, we've been using animation in the automotive industry for years. However, I think this is getting a little bit out of hand, and some people might really like this, and I guarantee a lot of people are gonna hate this. Now, you wanna talk about robots, fine, but this takes it to a whole new level. 
We're talking about full-blown 3D printed homes. Companies like Icon are using concrete printers to print homes in a day, one layer at a time. It's fast, it's strong, it's repeatable. And by 2030, this won't be a gimmick. Cities, disaster relief, and affordable housing programs will use it full time. Now, I will say that I seen a video not too long ago with a house being printed with a 3D printer. There were three guys running the machine, but right in front of the three workers, the owner of the company stated that within about a year or two, we would only need one person to print not only one house, but an entire neighborhood. So right now, the minimum number of operators is three. I think in the next 12 months, we'll remove, we'll automate the magma completely. So we'll be down to about two. And I think the sort of holy grail is where one person can watch a dozen systems. You need one person to watch a dozen systems. But as of now, you have- Way to motivate your workforce, head. He basically said in front of the three workers that two of them were going to lose their job within the next couple of years. That is not real nice like. And if you're somebody that works for the city, well, you might want to watch this as well. So remember a couple months ago, we did a video on the Yarbo outdoor lawnmower. This isn't your average Roomba wannabe. It uses GPS cameras, obstacle avoidance, and works like a pro. You can control it through your phone, schedule cuts, and forget it. It's one of the coolest things I've ever tested on this channel, and it's a robot lawnmower. Not only is it a lawnmower, you can put string attachments on it, you can edge, you can blow the leaves, you can snow blow with it. It's like a Swiss army knife lawnmower. But here's the thing, it's not just for DIY people. They have these out in cities cutting grass. It's completely remote controlled. Nobody's sitting on the tractor anymore going up and down the medium. Now imagine skid steers, pallet jacks, and forklifts. I mean, have you been in Sam's Club lately? They have an automated floor scrubber. And I don't think everything's doom and gloom. I mean, look at the wearable exoskeletons. I remember first hearing this about five years ago in the automotive industry. And now you're seeing them come to warehouses. They're coming to job sites. And basically they're just battery powered suits that let you lift with your arms like they're your legs, if that makes sense. Carry a five gallon bucket in each hand like it's a coffee mug. Now I've heard people speculate about bringing this to the military as well, but basically it would turn an everyday worker into an Iron Man. If you're lifting heavy things all day and you got back issues and you're worried about hurting yourself on the job, this might be right up somebody's alley. All right, check this out. What if you're somebody that builds houses? You're a contractor that is a local builder and you have a client that wants to build a house on their dream piece of property. I'd like a log cabin style vacation ski home. Vitruvius asks you questions and learns from your answers, incorporating knowledge from every design it's ever seen. I'd like an open floor plan for family events. I tried it out with Ballard's help. It's got the fireplace in your bedroom, as you have asked, um, and it's a traditional log cabin style. So you can do this free on ChatGPT now. Let me show you. So what I'm going to do is take my image. I'm going to drop it right in here like this. I'm going to describe what I want. I want to keep the original image, but I want to add a brand new house. It's new and looks pretty cool. After a few seconds of thinking, AI does its thing. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the AI created. This is the original picture, and then this is the new one. You can see it just fixed the border around here. It kept the same power line, the exact same cloud structure, the trees over here, but this is what it did. And I just put in a random simple request for a new house that looked pretty real nice like. You can add new shutters, you can change the color of the door, you could make a different garage door, add different lightings, different roof. It's crazy what you can do with this stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. I think a lot of this stuff is pretty cool and I think AI will make humanity's life a little bit easier in the future. However, what I don't wanna see is a complete takeover of AI and robotics. I mean, look at the HVACs, the plumbers, the electricians, the roofers, all of these people that are doing these jobs to put food on their table. That's what I worry about. As far as it goes with the 3D printed homes, I mean, yeah, structurally, they're pretty freaking strong. So would it be ideal to build something like that in Tornado Alley? Yeah, probably. But I gotta be honest with you, AI right now is only as smart as we make it. I mean, they're not coming out with cool designs. They're basically just copying what humanity's already done. And eventually, if we just have AI running it, I feel that things will get pretty bland. So I definitely don't think in the future that AI and robotics are gonna take over everything, but I do see them being a problem for some people. But I wanna know what you think. I love hearing that sweet, sweet feedback in the comment section below. And this video, if you liked it, smash that like button, get subscribed, hit the bell notification check out this video down here. We'll be back with more videos soon.